Okay, for my first soft-spoken recording, it's not real, I whisper, I'm going to start with T.S. Eliot's The Naming of Cats, and I might continue if you like this one because I, I do enjoy this book, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, and I know there's a musical cats, but that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about recording a few of the poems because they are some of my favorites. Anyway, here is The Naming of Cats by T.S. Eliot. The naming of cats is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. First of all, there's the names that the family use daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonso, or James, such as Victor or Jonathan, George or Bill Bailey, all of them sensible everyday names. There are fancier names if you think they sound sweeter. Some for the gentlemen, some for the dames, such as Plato, Admetus, Electra, Demeter, but all of them sensible, everyday names. But I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular, a name that's peculiar and more dignified, else how can he keep up his tail perpendicular? or spread out his whiskers, or cherish his pride. Of names of this kind I can give you a quorum, such as Monkey Strap Quaxo or Coracopats, such as Bumbalurina or else Jelly Lorem, names that never belong to more than one cat. But above and beyond, there's still one name left over, and that is the name that you never will guess, the name that no human research can discover but the cat himself knows, and will never confess. When you notice a cat in profound meditation, the reason, I tell you, is always the same. His mind is engaged in a rapt contemplation of the thought, of the thought, of the thought of his name, his ineffable, effable, effan ineffable, deep, an inscrutable, singular name.